Hi everyone, welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Tesla achieved record deliveries in Q4. It hopefully goes without saying that it's highly likely this would also imply record earnings. So let's see if we can calculate what the earnings might be using econometrics. In my recent 2021 production estimates video, I managed to ascertain a reasonable idea of a breakdown on what models were produced and where. We can use this information to try and best work out the estimate of what the earnings will be as different models have different margins. I've been tracking the number of Made in China Model 3s as best I can. The only actual number I have from Q4 is October at 22,292 Model 3s manufactured in Shanghai. This was up from 18,318 in September. Due to Tesla telling us this, fa this facility has a capacity of 25,000 a month, I slowed down the production improvements from my November and December estimates at 23,000 and 24,000 accordingly. So if we total them up, it gives us an estimated amount of sales of 69,292 made in China Model 3s. Tesla did not give individual figures for the Model 3 or Model Y either. They're just broken up into S and X and 3 and Y. However, we are able to view the VIN range of the Model Ys registered in the US. This is not an accurate figure, but does give us a range of where the potential production numbers lie. With the data, we're gonna estimate that Tesla sold 40,000 Model Ys in quarter four. Tesla do provide data on the Model X and S. This number was 18,920. So with that, we're now able to calculate the Model 3 is produced in Fremont. If we use the total deliveries of 180,570 for Q4 and subtract all the other model production numbers we worked out, then we're left with 50,708 Fremont Model 3s. Now we've calculated an estimated number of each models produced from each location. We need to calculate the average selling price of each model. We can then add that onto the last quarter to work out the extra revenue Q4 will produce. I tried a variety of ways to calculate the average selling price of vehicles, only to discover that it would appear that they fluctuate too much each quarter to draw any solid inferences. So I ended up guessing the average sales prices by assuming these are the rough proportion as to which the models are sold. With that, we just need to work out the difference between the fourth quarter and the third. For Model, 4, for model 3 Fremont, I'm guessing 50% standard, standard range plus, 35% long range and 15% performance. Model Y Fremont, 70% long range, 30% performance. Made in China, 100% standard range plus. And for SNX, I just roughly consolidated a guess of all the models combined. I then looked up all the prices of all the models where they're sold. For Made in China Model 3, I took an average of the exchange rate over the period. When we factor in those prices, we then get an estimate price for each model sold in each location. Now we have that, we can plug it in our numbers and see how much extra revenue Tesla will do. As you can see, according to these numbers, it would appear that we expect an addition of $1.822 billion in automotive car sales in quarter four compared to quarter three. Now, these are the prices of the cars alone without FSD upgrades. So we must factor that in too. The price of FSD at the start of the quarter was $8,000, but during the quarter, Tesla raised the price to $10,000. Now this increase will not only increase the FSD revenue, but it would also likely trigger a lot of FSD orders considering the 25% price hike. There'll be previous owners who would have upgraded as a result. In addition to that, FSD beta was released demonstrating more of the product's capabilities, which would also increase demand. And then on top of that, due to the beta release, it means the product has come along this much further and Tesla is therefore able to release some of the FSD deferred profit. You see, despite people purchasing FSD and Tesla receiving payment for it, the fact is that Tesla don't have FSD feature complete yet. So Tesla are not able to take all of the FSD income as profit. The remainder is left as deferred profits for when more features are released. We believe that before beta, they were likely talking about 50% of the profits. However, now it's likely they were able to receive about 60% of the FSD income. For these reasons, I believe this quarter will be big for FSD. So we don't know the actual percentage of cars that come with FSD, but I think if we assume 25% of consumers order of FSD, particularly this month, which I believe to be conservative, and they paid an average price of 9,333, as it was $8,000 in October and $10,000 in November and December, and average that out for the quarter, we get 9,333, and we guess that 60% of that can actually be claimed so in other words, we're going to give an average of 25% times 60% times 9,333 means we're going to assume an average of $1,400 per car of income of FSD for the quarter. 
There are always people upgrading FSD, but when the price increases by $2,000, it will encourage and incentivize more people to do so. Let's say perhaps 20,000 Tesla owners upgraded FSD. So that would give Tesla an additional $4,800 per car, 60% of 8,000, which is gonna be a further $96 million. So now we've established additional revenue from FSD, it gives us a total extra estimated income of 1.88 billion from Q3 to Q4. We can add the additional FSD upgrade revenue estimated to be 96 million, along with the estimated deferred profit to bring a total additional revenue of 2.22 billion. So let's add the Q3 revenue of 7.2 billion, giving us 9.44 billion. I'm guessing tax credits are not as high this quarter, so I'm placing them at just 300 million, down from 397 in Q3, bringing the total annual auto revenue to $9.74 billion for Q4. Now, Tesla isn't really growing the energy business that much at this stage. The main issue is that they can't make enough batteries to really start getting into it yet. I expect the energy business won't start really growing until sometime next year when Tesla have more batteries at their disposal. I have more hope for solar, but Q4 is a colder quarter and they don't install as many during winter. So to be honest, anything here, I'm just gonna speculate really. In addition to that, it's not a major part of the income. So any area we have here shouldn't have a huge impact on the overall main numbers. For all of this, I would like to keep it simple and just maintain the same figures from last quarter. In Q3, Tesla's revenue from all other activities were 1.16 billion. So if we then add that onto our automotive revenue, it gives us a total of 10.9 billion revenue for Q4, which is an increase of 24% from Q3. Now that's revenue. So let's see if we can calculate how much extra profit this will mean for Tesla using the same method. In Q3, they achieved a gross margin of 27.7%. That was up over 2% from the previous quarter at 25.4%. I believe this increase in margin is due to two factors, the Shanghai Model 3 ramp up and the Model Y ramp up. These two vehicles have outstanding margins. The made in China Model 3 is produced so much cheaper than in California, and the Model Y sells for so much more than the Model 3 in America, yet supposedly costs the same to make. So the numbers I guessed for average selling price have a difference of over $9,000. However, we would assume that the cost of the long range 3 and Y are the same. So the difference in price there is only $3,000, but it's not possible to buy a standard range Model Y. So consumers are forced to pay the extra. But as the long range is so much more expensive, it does come with a lot more margin. If we guess that a Model 3 long range has a margin of 25%, if it sells for $47,000, then the profit is 11,750. But if it was a Model Y, for the extra 3,000 at the same cost, then that would equate to a profit of 14,750, which at a $50,000 price tag would now be a whopping 29.5%. And that doesn't even include FSD. Likewise, if they are able to drop about $5,000 off the cost of the made in China Model 3, then they might have similar margins there. And remember, the majority of the extra sales come from these two cars. But these are just examples used to demonstrate how much extra margin the Y and Made in China Model 3 can produce. We don't know the actual individual figures. So let's work out the profits. We've calculated auto revenue from the quarter now. We need to work out the profit margin. Last quarter was 27.7%, up 2.3% from the previous quarter. I believe this quarter margins will be quite a bit higher due to the Made in China Model 3 costs so much less to produce and the Model Y sells for so much more and the price rise for FSD. I'm gonna guess 28.5%, but it's highly possible it might not be far off 30%. So that gives us a total of 535,804,663 extra gross margin this quarter from Q3. We also need to add in the FSD upgrades from existing owners and the deferred profits. However, we need to remove the discrepancy between the forecasted tax credits and Q4, which was 97 million, as I projected only 300 million credits this quarter instead of 397 million. Also, it might be fair to assume a potential increase in operating expenses. As they have 25% more sales, let's just increase our operating expenses by 25% from last quarter. It shouldn't have increased this much due to economies of scale, but we'll still use it anyway, just to be on the safe side. So Q3 has an OPEX of 1.254 billion, which equates to an additional 313 million if we take 25% of that. When we factor that in, we arrive at $471 million extra profit this quarter from the last. 
And if we add that onto Q3 non-GAAP profit of 874 million, then we have 1.35 billion non-GAAP. Now, last quarter, Elon Musk received one of his bonuses and that affected the GAAP profit significantly. He doesn't have a bonus this quarter, so I honestly can't imagine that GAAP would be much different from non-GAAP. So I think GAAP might be around 1.01 billion if we remove, say, a quarter of a billion dollars difference between the two. And that's it. My predictions for the earnings report. A Q4 revenue of 10.9 billion and a Q4 GAAP profit of 1.095 billion. Thanks very much for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.